Welcome everybody to Dead Talk Live. I am your host, Viz, and tonight we have actor, writer, director, Franklin Rich, whose new movie, The Artifice Girl, is coming to theaters and streaming on demand April 27th. Franklin, thank you so much for being our guest today. How's it going? How are you doing, man? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Really appreciate it. Uh, very excited to be here. And as I told you before we got started, I did not know what I was getting into with The Artifice Girl, but I really, really loved this film. So let's just get right to it. Uh, sure. the, the film starts with uh, Dina, which is played by uh, Cinda Nichols, almost forgot her name there, who did an amazing job asking Siri on her iPhone, how do I know what is right or wrong? Why was it important for you to start the movie with that scene right there? I think, uh, yeah, that's a great question. I think it's it's very important for for several reasons. Uh, one, I think, becomes becomes more obvious uh, when when people watch the film and they and they uh, learn what the the final lines of the film are. Mm -hmm. It's you know, uh, I think there's there's something kind of poetic about asking uh, a, a non sentient bit of technology you know like an, an ethical question uh and and the the response that we're going to get perhaps today might be different than the response we get a year from now or 10 or 20 or 100 um so i think that was was important to kind of set up uh just in a, in a very kind of simple context that this was going to be a conversation about ethics and technology um and that's that's sort of the the basis of the film and i really related to that because i find myself when i'm having to make a decision between a or b i will ask siri i don't want her to chime in right now i will ask her heads or tails and i choose but beforehand I heads is one thing and tails is another and a lot of people do it i got i mean they may not admit to it but i find myself doing it often i know it's weird you're talking to a you, you're basically talking to computer code, okay? Sure, you're not sure. talking to someone with a brain, but we find ourselves doing it. Now, this movie deals with, you know, true artificial intelligence, which is still in the realm of science fiction, but it is becoming more talked about in today's world. What are your personal feelings regarding AI? <laughs> Gosh, you know, I wish I had an easy answer for that question. <laughs> um, you know, I wrote the script back in uh, the spring of 2020. So AI was kind of a, you know, an, an interesting hot topic, but no one was talking about it the way that they have been in the past three months. Like mm -hmm. you said, it's been uh, incredible just how much uh, everybody is, has been seemingly obsessed with it recently. Um, and, you know, I think that there right now there are kind of two camps. You've got people that are extremely excited and people that are absolutely terrified. And I think both are valid for, for different reasons. I'm not entirely sure where on the spectrum I fall, but I, I, I will say that, like, you know, I, I'm, I'm excited that people are talking about AI for the for the sake of people being interested in, in the film. Um, but I, I do think that they're in, in spite of the film, perhaps being antiquated uh as far as its depiction of ai because ai has been advancing so rapidly who knows you know how far ahead uh of science fiction AI might become in, in just a few years yeah. uh but regardless i still think the film poses some questions and ideas that are still relevant um in regards to uh the the, the fact that ai i think is going to be inherently a reflection of the best and worst qualities of the people that develop it. Yeah. So if it's developed with, you know, uh, opportunistic, nefarious, and, you know, capitalistic purposes, that's what it's going to do. Mm -hmm. If it's if it's built for altruism and, you know, uh, for, for something like protecting children, then, you know, that's, that's probably a better scenario. However, there's still this possibility of our flaws. And yeah. in the case of, you know, the story of the artifice girl, our childhood traumas could get passed down to an AI in the way that uh, trauma and flaws get passed down to children. Absolutely. Um, so I think therefore, regardless of what happens with AI in the, in the coming years and months, uh, we as individuals and especially as organizations should be approaching AI with thoughtfulness, uh, compassion, and uh, you know, 
integrity. I, I don't know I, how likely that is, but that's that's what I believe. I completely agree. And another aspect that I that I love is that for this film is the mainstream media from iRobot to Megan quite recently, AI has been portrayed one way, and that is turning into a psychotic, vicious serial killer. Countless movies have done that. And you give us this really alternate side. It's sort of like, you know, the other debater in a debate giving the opposite point of view. And that's what we get with the Artifice Girl. Now, Cherry is the AI. You know, she's the little girl who is the AI. What, for you, writing and directing... What was the main aspect that you wished people would take away from the character of Cherry? That's a great question. You know, I feel like I I, I didn't necessarily want to, um, you know, project a, a, a point of view or, you know, um, like I, I didn't want people to come away necessarily feeling like, oh, my God, now I have empathy for AI. You know, I, not necessarily that. I think... I, I love that people are coming out of it with with different perspectives than than they went into it. But I think more than anything, what I want people to take away from from you know Cherry and from the discussions of the Artifice Girl, I I just hope that uh, it incites discussion yeah. and incites conversation about these topics and these ideas. I think that talking about them is is very important. Uh, and honestly, that's I think a, a huge part of the 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 reason why the conflict in the film happens is because uh a lack of uh communication exactly um, and a lack yeah. of being open and talking about the things that make us uncomfortable and the things that we regret and the things that uh, uh that haunt us um so i hope i hope people come out of the film with with that idea Hearing your answer to the previous question brought up an interesting point as you were talking about it. Now, you as a filmmaker, and you were talking about AI in the future inherently getting the flaws of whoever created it. As a filmmaker, do you see your own point of view getting passed down through your films? Just to draw a comparison between the two. Absolutely. You know, I think that that what 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 i said about ai also goes for art in a in a weird kind of meta way i i do think that art is going to inherit the best and worst parts of the artist in in a way um uh, you know so, sometimes those are more obvious than 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 others and sometimes like the context is is important and, and essential when it comes to art i feel like uh you know with with this film there's definitely a lot of my own personal um struggles and battles and and things that uh things that have troubled me in the yeah. past that that i i think definitely informed how i i wrote and and directed this this film in the way that definitely. i know that several of the other actors and and even members of the crew uh put their own experiences into their craft uh when collaborating on this project now for me uh the film was more about gareth which is your character. You play Gareth. Uh, Franklin is also one of the stars of the movie. For me, uh, the movie was more about the arc of Gareth from the childhood trauma he suffered through his entire life as opposed to the evolution of Cherry. That was my take on that. What are your feelings and thoughts on that? I, I think that's that's an absolutely valid uh, perspective. Uh, absolutely. You know, it's... Gareth is the character that is is there from from start to finish, um, and it's because of his trauma and because of his experiences that the story even happens. Yeah, um, uh, he's 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 the grandfather of of of, of everything um, in this story. But I I also will say too to to kind of uh, to to put a spin on that because I don't disagree, but I do think that Gareth, in a sense, um, is really the antagonist the whole time uh it, it, i could it, see that even though he is the main character and the protagonist definitely in, in his own mind and in kind of the way that he's framed a lot in the film uh, i i would say that in every act there are characters with intentions and all of those intentions are uh, uh <laughs> they they come into conflict uh with gareth yeah. gareth is 
one who impedes everybody's forward momentum uh, in th throughout the course of the story, whether it's Dina in Act One wanting to, you know, utilize the technology that Gareth is in possession of, mm -hmm. whether in Act Two, I don't want to spoil too much, but whether it's Amos wants answers about something and Gareth is the one withholding those answers. And I won't say anything about Act Three, but he's definitely the <laughs> the obstacle in that act as well. So, um, uh, you know, I think that's a fun spin on it. And yeah. I love stories about antagonists too. I love stories about, you know, whether it's uh, Thanos or the Grinch. Like, exactly. And, and stories about those kind of characters. And Gareth to me is like the kind of stereotypical, really genius guy that we see who really thinks he knows it all and that everybody else knows a lot less than him. And they're not even qualified to chime in on the conversation because. He knows what's best, he knows what's right, and there's no other way about it. There was a pivotal scene in the movie, and you just mentioned it, in the second act, chapter two, where Cherry has to reveal a secret. And emotions flare, it gets very intense. Did you wrestle when you were writing the script on how you wanted that secret, let's just call it a secret for right now, to be revealed? You know, I, I definitely knew that it it, uh, it had to be a somewhat of a climactic moment mm -hmm. uh, because it was such an important moment. It, it's a very important secret to be revealed. Um, I definitely think it's funny that you mentioned the characteristics of Gareth. I definitely wanted there to be a moment where Gareth gets humbled a little bit. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, uh, and that was kind of a perfect opportunity for those two moments to happen um, uh, and, and coincide with each other. Uh, I, I love that moment because it, it um, you know, it's the, the film is has sort of one way of solving problems throughout the, the course of its runtime, which is conversation and discussion, which I, I absolutely believe in. But there's a point at which conversation can can do no more. Yeah. And therefore, a character has to uh, <laughs> all, all I'll say is that he employs a different method. And for, yeah, for me, the whole the whole film pivots in that scene in that moment that's how intense it was now gareth created cherry but he's also the one most reluctant to acknowledge she is anything more than computer code why is that right. well i think you know not to not to get too far into spoilers territory but he represents uh or, or she represents uh his trauma to him you know uh he he knows that if he grants her uh, any sort of autonomy or acknowledges that autonomy is even possible for AI, uh, then that undermines his his sole intention, which is like the the entire fundamental basis of his in, of his entire person personhood and his purpose. You know, like that's that's it. And if that were to go away, that would leave him uh, adrift. Yeah. Uh, and so that's why I think it's it's so important to him. He's so uh, caged by by his trauma and by his uh, regrets of the past that he's he he can't even recognize that he is potentially doing the same imparting the same kind of yeah. trauma and abuse onto someone else. Exactly. Now Tatum Matthews plays Cherry. She did a fantastic job. Did you and Tatum have to? Did, you have to have a lot of talks uh, with Tatum to make sure that she portrayed Cherry the way that you envisioned, or did she really catch on really quickly to how you wanted uh, Cherry to be seen on the screen? Yeah, I, I mean Tatum. Uh, Tatum is an exceptional actor, and uh, and and it, yeah. To be perfectly honest, I, I really can't take much of the credit when it comes to shaping her character. Uh, it was an, it, it, we, we had high expectations for her, but because we had worked with her previously on several other projects, we knew that she could meet it, but I had no idea how far she would exceed those expectations. She was great. Uh, I mean, she's like, like, like you, I mean, I don't have to, yeah, she was I, phenomenal. I think her performance speaks for herself. You know, it's, um, it, it's incredible. And you know, we did have conversations about sort of the broad general ideas behind Cherry and, you know, what, what were the, the kind of the, the, um, those sort of beats and where her evolution was at those particular beats. Um, so we did have conversations about that. We did do a lot of table work, but at the same time, 
Tatum took this material and uh, really extracted something even more uh, incredible um, and, and brought nuance and complexity to a character that is already so profoundly difficult to portray. Yeah. So uh, I, again, <laughs> hats, hats, off to to her. Her. hats off to her. Yeah. Uh, now the film takes place over a long time period. You could say over the course of a lifetime. Um, now, was that important to go over such a long time span to basically let all the characters show their evolution from Dina to Gareth to Cherry? Is that why you chose to tell it over a 50 year time span? I, yeah, that was a that was a decision that uh, happened uh, surprisingly early on in the in the writing process. Um, I kind of knew uh, from from very early on that even though I, I loved the idea of exploring like what would happen in this in this one intimate scene of this interrogation, uh, I also wanted to explore what would happen, <laughs> you know, super far into the future. Yeah, and I didn't have three seasons of an HBO series to flesh that out. So in my mind, it was like, okay, well, I, I know I'm starting here and I want to get there. So what are the other important moments in between those two sort of uh, uh, brackets? Yeah. And uh, that, that really informed, okay, there's going to be these three sequences that would play out in real time. Um, and what are the parallels? Why are these moments crucial? And, and, you know, uh, uh, yeah, that 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 happened uh, very early on in the in the process of of writing. Now we have to mention that Lance Henriksen plays the older version of Gareth, your character. I mean, Lance is legendary. What was it like to work with uh, Lance uh, with you behind the camera? Oh, I mean, yeah, everything that you would imagine and more. Uh, <laughs> like so. So that was, uh, by the way, I apologize. I'm gonna, if, if, if it's all right with you, yeah, I'm just yeah, gonna go turn ahead. the mic on real quick. Yeah, it, yeah. The sun went down very yeah, quickly. Yeah, no problem. Lance Henriksen was just absolutely phenomenal in this film. And Thank uh, you. Yeah. he, uh, you know, we, we always knew that he was at the top of our list to play the role um, for obvious reasons. I mean, if, uh, not, not just as he obviously he's, he's an incredible actor, but the the legacy that he carries, mm -hmm. um, especially with uh, with sort of this metatextual, his history of playing AI characters uh, you know, was aliens was too. I mean, if any, yeah. part of the decision. So, but we never thought that we would have the opportunity to actually get to to cast him. Uh, but we were lucky enough to have Paper Street Pictures as our producers who got the script in front of him. And uh, something about it must have resonated with him because uh, he, uh, I, had a, I had my first phone call with him. We talked for hours wow. about the story, about the character of Gareth, about, uh, about the, the, the themes and, and the subject matter and, uh, and how he was connecting it to his own personal experiences. I mean, he was so passionate about the, the story and about this project. Uh, we, we were so incredibly lucky that he, you know, he didn't just show up and read the lines. He no. really gave it his all. And to then have him, you know, on set, this person that I've idolized since I was little, you know, paired up with this child actor prodigy who I feel like I've had a small part in discovering. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and then getting the, their chemistry was immediate and electric uh, when when they when they first met on set. And uh, between takes, we would just continuously just talk about everything, uh, all of the subtext and all of the, the you know, the character uh, frameworks. And um, I mean, it was just an absolutely incredible experience. And I, it, it, after we would wrap production each day, he would just always say, all right, where are we going? And it was like, <laughs> oh, OK, I guess we'll, you know, we'll go to. Outback Steakhouse because that's the only thing that's nearby, and talk more about the about the story and about the ideas. Uh, so that was, I mean, he was he was terrific, uh, incredible to work with. But I mean, everybody uh, like he's a legend. He course, is a legend. You know? He's absolutely a legend. Now, for me as the audience watching that scene in the third act, the dialogue between Cherry and older Gareth, played by Lance Henriksen, it was just so captivating what was it like for you standing next to behind that camera 
watching those two at their best going back and forth with that dialogue what what did you feel in that moment you know it's it's a uh i mean it's it's uh, for me i would just I would, directors i would think it's magical just okay. to see that happen absolutely i mean it's it's uh it's what every writer and director hopes and, and dreams for you know like uh the opportunity to see uh to see that unfold mm -hmm. in, in real time and be reminded of why you cared so much about this project in the first place you know yeah. that that was definitely there was like this sort of revitalization or just this renewal of enthusiasm for something that you felt you were so close to and that yeah. you couldn't you know you couldn't see the the forest of the trees anymore because everything was just shots and lines you you forgot the the the, the story and and what made it special but getting to see the two of them uh in those in that in that in those final scenes uh was yeah like you said it was magical it was very special for me it was like a conversation that was 50 years in the making that yeah. was, that was delayed for 50 years that, that's what it felt like for me the movie guys is called the artifice girl now it's coming out in theaters and streaming on demand is it in uh do you know which city so people if want if they want to go to the theaters you know which cities it's going to go yes, to so in the theaters if you happen to be in jacksonville florida which is my home hometown it's going to be playing at sunray cinema but uh for everybody else uh that's likely not living here <laughs> in jacksonville uh it'll be playing in la uh, san francisco austin chicago and uh new york so if you're in one of those cities uh see if you can get tickets if they're not already sold out uh i would love to see you there uh, talk uh, to me i'll be there uh for q and a's and uh if if they are sold out you can get the film on online. vod on amazon and apple uh on the 27th whether it's in the theaters guys or streaming on demand please watch this film like i said in the beginning i don't know what i was going to get with the artifice girl but i was captivated from start to end franklin congratulations you did a brilliant job both on the screen and behind the camera writing the script and everything else uh, you must be very excited for this film and all your hard work and you're going to get to show it to people because ultimately that's what we're in this business for is for people to see our work and i think this movie is going to be tremendously successful so congratulations again uh on this great thank film. you very much yeah and i'm sure you must be very proud i want to thank our audience those of you who are tuning in live and those of you who will be watching this later on my guest tonight, Franklin Rich, actor, writer, director from The Artifice Girl, coming to theaters and on demand April 27th. Thank you again on behalf of Franklin, myself. Stay safe and stay walking. Good night, everybody. Thank you so much.